Hey guys, how's it going? I got a really cool bass guitar. It came in to have new strings put on it. And my customer agreed to go ahead and let me make a video about it. So come on inside and take a look at this thing. So I've got Glenn down here. He's going to help me with the video today. You guys all know Glenn. Glenn, tell us what we're looking at right here. It's actually a, a BC Rich, a very early BC Rich. Um, so he said he bought it in 78. So a good one, nonetheless. You're not going to find stuff like this sitting around anymore. And when you do, it's expensive. This um, is a left-handed BC Rich Eagle. It's an Eagle base. Uh huh. And and it, it's got to be a rare one for '78 because if you remember in '78, it was the Seagull and it had a point right there. Right. And the point used to stick in your chest. And then Neil Moses told Vernie. Oh, right hey, in this area. Let's get that point out of there. Well, they made a Seagull too, and they took yeah. the, the point out in the Seagull yep. too. But that was because it was stabbed in your chest. And right. Believe me, I've, if you played some of the old uh, old stuff, you know, I'm going the wrong way because it's a lefty. But if you play some of that old, old, those old eagles, yeah, they'll stab you. It, it's just a, the way it is, part of life. But these guitars are like, the quality of these things is crazy. Don't think BC Rich like they do today, you know? No, not, absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I bought this uh, new, ordered it from the old 19, early 78. And um, I'm the original owner. It's never been out of my possession, and uh, I just love it. I love the bass. These and, thump. Oh, yeah. These things oh, thump. Yeah. And, and the Eagle is just a great guitar. I mean, a lot of guys, oh, I don't like an Eagle. I like this model. I like that. Everybody's got their own preference. But if you have owned a hand raid BC Rich, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They rock. Okay, one thing that's cool about this is, uh, you know, you've got the 70s knobs on it, which is really awesome. And, and they, they changed later to the top hat style knobs, but these were used in the 70s. The badass bridge is just awesome on this guitar. Um, and it's just beautiful. Love the vintage diamonds, and they're just cool. And here's something that's cool about this that a lot of people don't realize. Look at the headstock. Now, if I were playing that right-handed, this point would be facing down, and the top part of the R right there would be up towards the sky. Well, this is a left-handed, so you'd be playing it the other way, and it would be backwards. Right-handed, you'd be playing it, it would be just like that. Left-handed, it inverts. So the R would actually be upside down, and the reason for that is, Back then, they would have the necks made. And they would just take a right-handed neck, which is what this is, and they would cut the nut and the saddles for a lefty and do the cab, the wings, change the, they could actually take a, a right-handed and swap the wings, pull the wings off, but they didn't do that. They would just route it and do it for left-handed. So basically, swap Take a right-handed neck and put left-handed wings on it with a left-handed cavity. Do the badass bridge left-handed. Cut the bone nut left-handed. That is a bone. And you've got a left-handed guitar. There's one of the cool things that people don't realize about the BC Riches that, yeah, they'll, they would have taken some right-handed necks back then to make a left-handed guitar. Pretty cool knowledge there. Um, this was in really, really, really good shape. Look at the wood. It's just atrociously nice. I can tell you right now, grabbing wood like this whew, cost you some money. And it's the original case. That's really a cool instrument. Oh, yeah, I know. And I actually played the 74 prototype. A lot of people say that the prototype was done in 77, 78, and it wasn't. Neil built the prototype to the Seagull in 74. Right. And Neil's got it up at the shop. I actually played oh, it. Oh, does he have the prototype? Yeah. He, he I, used to play that thing in the, in the brass rail. And the brass uh, rail. Oh, in, Glen, yeah. in Glendale, California. And, uh, you know, him and, uh, I used to hang at the brass rail so with Eddie Van Halen and all those guys. So did I. Another cool little bar. And then didn't they move, they move to Monrovia or over to another one in Monrovia down the road from Santa Anita? I don't know because I left LA in 77 but uh, yeah, 
Paul Vidas and the old band was the house band with uh, the brass rail there on brand. And, uh, yeah. Neil, Neil gigged and gigged and gigged back then, didn't Oh, he? hell yeah. So what year did they stop putting that nice R up on the headstock? Oh, that was... Uh, you know, the scripted logo came in 85, 86, after yeah, Neil was, left. Yeah. Yeah, it was later on, because they had that... Of course, my... My favorite logo is not the R logo. It's the R logo with the guitar for the R. Yeah, that's... Because this side of it will be a guitar. I'm not sure if my acoustic has that or not. I got an acoustic, it's 75, it'll be 28. Woo. Yeah. Brazilian Rosewood. Yeah. yeah. I, sh I should have brought that in to show you. I didn't even think about it. Yeah, that was those acoustics. Bernie, Bernie was built some great acoustics. Oh, yeah. So what artist do you know that actually played the an eagle bass. Neil Giraldo. Not a bass, but he played the guitar. The eagle and, and bass. Brad was a, Whitford played an eagle. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of people that have Do you eagle. recall anybody that was actually a bass player that played these? No, I Brickass John. Who's that? Uh, he was with uh, Alice Cooper for a while. Yeah. Oh okay. What was his name? Brickash John. Okay. He was a I believe it was a Indian fellow from yeah. India. And then, uh, Dick, of course, Dick Wagner was playing the bitch and stuff. Steve Hunter and yeah. Danny Weiss. Really, back in the day, I mean, back in the 70s, early 80s, if, if you were playing at BC Rich, you were making some money. Oh, this this was the best guitar built back yeah. then. You know, the modern guitars, I'm sure they're they're better. Maybe the electronics are better, and, and they're all, all machine cut and stuff now. These are all hand built. These are done with knives. Yeah, these are done with knives. If you ever saw it, wands, tools, and stuff, and you know, Neil's got his old bench up at the shop up in. Oh hell yeah, he's got. That's the bench that you see that picture of uh, Rick Derringer playing the bitch sitting at Neil's bench. It's, it's all over the internet. Type Rick, Rick Derringer, BC Rich bitch. Yeah, and you'll see a. a Photograph of, yeah, of Rick of with the pants on playing it. Well, that's sitting at Neil's bench. Oh, the one he's got up here in the valley? No, that was out at BC Ridge. Oh, out, out in Illinois. What what wood is this? Do you think this here is is, is um, mahogany and maple? Well, actually, mahogany and koa. What are these? Koa. Yeah, it's koa. Is that what these stripes are? Koa. Yeah. These are rosewood stringers. Right? Okay. And koa. This is the first one with the rosewood stringers. They were all white stringers. Yeah. I called her before. Yep. And Neil said, uh, I'm going to do something a little different with your bass. And I said, well, go ahead and do what you want. And so I got, I know, got, a, I got a good deal on it. So, you know, it's like... Uh, that's a magical time when Neil says, I'm going to do something a little different. Yeah. Because you know <laughs> something's coming, you know. And, and I, Neil, I love him to death. I mean... Oh, he's it's like I was telling Dean... I mean, he's known a lot of uh, super uh, famous people. He's exactly. still the same laid-back dude that he always was. He's just know? Neil. Just Neil's Neil, you know? Neil is Neil, and he has he's seen it and done it. Right. What other fret marker designs did BC Rich use? Well, the clouds. Oh, those clouds. Yeah. That's right. But I like the diamonds, to be honest. I, I like my clouds. Don't I got I own a bit PMS. The clouds are just a little bit. Did they use to paint these guitars way back in the day? I don't know who painted them. It was a poly. Um, there's a few people were painting back then, and then um, then Dan Lawrence came along in the '80s, and did Dan Lawrence do a lot of painting for him? All those snake skins and crazy paint jobs. Mike Lauren was doing them, and, and Dan Lawrence was doing them. Um, there's a few people that were doing them. And I'll tell you what. Late 80s were some great guitars. Nothing like pre-1985. Hey, um, there's some uh, paperwork inside the case. Let's look at some of that paperwork and talk about these electronics. Well, there's a warranty. I wonder if it's still under warranty, right? Original be. owner, so you never know. Well, I, know it, I know it's under warranty. because. And here's a diagram, you know, that'll tell you the, uh, the switching. Um, and okay. basically... I'll just so you know. Okay. You've got boosters, phase switch, baritone on and off, and that right there is like a kill switch, isn't it? I think so. Okay. Coil so. tap here, booster, uh -huh. in and out of phase. Right. Okay, so master volume. Master volume, 
Pickup selector switch. Right. Neck volume, or booster volume. And this booster turns volume. your booster on right here. Yeah, you're gonna have a booster volume uh -huh. and a tone. Okay. okay. And a tone. And there's a five position baritone right there. Uh-huh. Um, and he wired them different then uh -huh. as opposed to now. Yeah. Um, this is the original circuit. Uh, mine, so on mine, I've got, you know, the... So this one coiled splits yeah. the front. Yeah, split this the coil, coil splits the rear. Mm-hmm. And this is puts them in phase or... Right, that's a booster. Parallel phase. Right. This is this here would be uh, the phase right there. That's the phase splitter, booster, right? Uh -huh. Right here. Yeah. Booster one, booster two, and the coil split, the baritone on and off, correct? A lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of guitar there. Um, one of the coolest ones I've seen. It's in great shape. All I'm right, well, I'm going to plug home. it in, and I'm going to play it a little tiny bit, even though I'm you not. You play left-handed? No, I don't. I tried playing Jimmy We're Hendrix's guitar right one time. There we go. I couldn't do it. And here it is, living proof that Dane is upside down. You know he's going to edit that out. <laughs> Got it. A 1978, maybe a 1980 BC Ridge bass. Right on. 